Welcome to Cabo Vision HD. I am Complacent Badger with... Impy! And we're going to continue watching some round two games. Yeah, this is, a, this is a pretty good matchup we've got here. Yeah. Uh, we are watching uh, the Beef uh, Beefcake Brigade, which is Mass Rack coaching a Chaos team. And he is up against Master Moose and his Kislev Circus team. Yeah, uh, two of our most experienced coaches, as and I mean, these guys have had some epic battles over the years. So. Yep. It'll be uh, it'll be interesting to see how this one goes, because uh, it is it is big uh, strength difference, but uh, well, maybe not an agility difference, uh, but at least a maneuverability difference. Yeah. The. The circus are a hundred percent a one of those agility pass based type teams, and uh, as we saw last week against your team, mm -hmm. uh, it's all about leap for this team. Like they're that's their their big iconic movement or skill, mm -hmm. and they're still only one skill on the entire chaos team. So yeah. Alright, well that's a good way to start it. That's pretty positive for uh for Maserak, letting him use up one of those rerolls early. Yes. Uh Maserak does have the benefit of having more rerolls and probably as a team that's not going to use as many rerolls normally as well. Yeah, that's that's very true. There's gonna be a lot of rolls from that from the circus team for sure. Yep. So, uh, breaking into that wing, I always like to set my uh, wings too deep, like right behind each other, um, mm -hmm. so that you, ca you can't just get an easy after hit, you can move on, uh, that there's somebody else right behind. Um, it does prevent me from having a true safety if I want to plug all lanes like that, uh, mm -hmm. but as long as you're playing a team that's not my team, you can easily just uh, roll somebody back because... Uh, even if they have more movement than you, they have to get across the line and probably blitz and, like, circumvent. So they're not going to get a full movement out there. Right. It's a, it's a pretty solid strategy. Because um, right now you'll there's... You'll see Masrak also opted to offset his whole defense a little bit to his left. Mm-hmm. Stage left, if you will. Yeah. And we can see here there's a lot of infiltration. Uh, he has, Masarak has uh, tagged each of the potential receivers over on this side. Uh, but we'll see if that's going to be enough. Uh, let's see how much pressure he can put on the ball carrier. He is doing the free moves first, though, for the most part. Making sure that he has all yeah. of the, uh, as many players marked as possible. Woo! That's a quick death. Let's see if the Apothecary works on him, and he is still dead. That is rough. And uh, yeah, I Someone think... is not earning his keep. Okay, so this player is going to go cover receivers. Wonder why that Chaos Warrior did not move in to engage somebody. I, I was certain that he was going to bring him over here to just be more of a problem, but he just left people unengaged. Yeah, I thought he was going to as well. Like, at the very least, you think he just moved him one space, and then he would have... Uh... What's called? They would have marked up one of those potential receivers. Yeah. Uh, Master Moose moving to engage so he can get that assist. Yep. And dodging out to create a pseudo cage here. Uh, interesting choice uh, right now, and we'll see if he has a bigger plan. Yeah, putting that blitzer back there. Uh, that's he's fairly caged up. I would worry about this one beastman right here. Yeah. That's gonna. I mean, let's see if Masterac sees it and does his. Yeah, do. for that. He does, right? One, yeah, two. he should cleanly. One, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah, he's got uh, it. That's uh, a straight up one, or that's straight up two die. That's yeah. not even trying. Uh, well, I guess that's. I guess if you don't want to put your guy on the sideline and you already had a guy yeah. there, that's a good move too. Uh, I would have done it for the push that way, just so the ball would pop near my players. Mm -hmm. um, but that's fine. Uh, yeah, the, I mean, it's still working. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh, probably not the player I would have thrown that block with just because it pushes him close to the ball and helps him mark the ball. Yeah, he might have done it just because of the block because it was a little uh, a little safer to use block first. Maybe, right. I don't know. That makes sense. 
But yeah, pushing guys towards the ball is not ideal right now. Alright, still hasn't moved this Chaos Warrior despite a lot of rolls being chucked out. So hopefully there's a plan with him and he's not just uh, standing him there on accident. Yeah, it looked like he was just standing there on accident. Alright. Well, he... that one receiver. Yeah. Uh, but that's good, though, because he's got a lot of pressure on the ball. He's got a lot of pressure on the one eligible receiver. Um... He does actually have an eligible receiver, because just to remind everyone, that may be a strength, th a strength four player. Yep. That is an agility three player. Yeah, the chaos is Very, very uh, usable. Okay, that was the last reroll. Master Moose is going through rerolls pretty, pretty quick. One a turn, so this is going to be a tough drive uh, unless something, unless Master Rack messes up or uh, something weird happens. Yeah. Uh, ah, weird. He didn't pick up that player. Maybe he intended on that was his hits to try to pick up the ball. Yeah, that was the carrier. the The catcher right here was going to be the ball carrier. I I could see that. That's fine. Uh, odd that we're not picking up these guys. All right, there we go. There we go. There we go. He hasn't had to dodge yet, so yeah. that movement was still a free move. Yeah, just seeing movements scare me when there's dudes that are clearly not going to be going anywhere. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I don't know how I feel about oh. Master Mooser on those blocks, though, without at least picking up that player. Like I know there was a plan involved, but nah, he needed that for the ball carrier. Um, I think he was, yeah, he was in a tough position, so I don't know if I would have done anything different than the one die, but um, rolling one die after you've already lost your reroll is really tough. Yeah. See, for me, I think I would have just marked the ball at that time, because you still have time, and there were already, there were, even after one die, still going to be two people marking that ball. Mm-hmm. So at least make sure that you have as much presence on it as possible. I think he's worried that... Uh, he can't stand in a fight against these guys, so he wants to end the drive as quickly as possible. So getting that touchdown is much better for his team. Like, failing getting that touchdown is much better for his team than just playing the slow game. Gotcha. Hey, -o. There's it works. Leap. Yeah. Yeah, he leaped onto the ball, failed it, but the ball popped into somebody else's hand. Which is always the benefit of having, like, really tight around the ball, because just because they fail doesn't mean everybody's going to fail. Yeah, doesn't mean you as a team are going to fail. Yeah. It's still a failed leap, so that means it was a turnover, but he's got possession, which is good. Um, I think that, that Chaos Warrior is going to teach him a lesson once uh, somebody else gets into position to make up for that assist. Right. And there it is. Alright, and that newly acquired dodge doing its job. Yep. Right, so not in a bad position at all right now. Now that basically Master X turn is done. Uh, he's got, unless this Beastman moves over here, that's actually a pretty dangerous receiver right now. And he yeah. moved, moved into the wrong direction, I would say. Maybe he didn't see him? Could be. Um... Because that might be a handoff to this cat right here. I know that's a tough handoff, but yep, there we go. Ah, turnover though. I was like, if you can get a handoff here and a pitch there, that's a quick touchdown. Yeah. Uh, I had actually thought about if he had done a leap into the space, I guess it would be like two right, right down there. left. No, the other way. Oh, this way? Yeah. One, two. Then try to dodge out. Uh, Yeah. I mean, you'd, you'd have to contend with this tackle zone here, so after the dot, that'd be tough. And that's a blitzer, not a catcher. Yeah, um, but it's still a, what, four plus on that? Yeah, uh, I think I would have gone backwards and then just uh, pushed out. Mm hmm Yeah, there that goes. Woo, terrible throw in for Master Moose. His fans are not doing him any favors right now. Again, especially with the player advantage, I think uh, Ma Master X should have had one beastman in the back. Yeah, because that would have uh, been a, that would have been a touchdown right there had he had one down there. Mm-hmm. I am curious to see if Master Moose is going to try for the two die uphill to get that Chaos Warrior off the pitch. Almost certainly, I think. 
uh, although the way that he's he definitely has had some rough rolls early going. He's got to level um, out at some point. Yeah. Yep, gotta go. Well, so he will not be doing that. I mean, maybe, he still might. Well, maybe to this one, but I was thinking the uh, the other one. Yeah. Not putting somebody down there just in the last ditch effort is. Yep. He tried it. Yep. I mean, it's worth the worth the risk, really. You've got yeah. a two and two and three chance of getting a push out. Yeah. Or I guess yeah. per die, so yeah. not quite that, but still. It's a it's a lineman too, so I mean, whatever. Mm -hmm. So he is not going to catch him with all these Chaos Warriors. Uh, but with two players heading down the pitch, it's going to be, both his catchers going down the pitch, it's going to be tough to reverse this into a touchdown in two turns. Though if anyone can, I'm not, not banking out Masters just yet. That's true. I think it's the drive is still alive, but it's wonky. Mm -hmm. Interesting that there was no follow-up. See, I thought it was weird earlier where he followed up with the Chaos Warrior to put him on the sideline in the first place. Mm -hmm. uh, which may have been to, you know, mark players in a certain way to try to make pushing off the pitch a little bit tougher. Mm -hmm. uh, but then, yeah, here, weird that there's no follow-up, because I mean, what are those players doing otherwise? Well, and he knows that there's going to have to be some wacky plays going on right now. But Master Moose steps up to it, so he must have some different plan. It probably is to pass there. And then to get to... The, can he get to him to hand it off? Or is he just going to go for the stay away and then touchdown next turn? Yep, that's exactly what he's doing. Yeah. See, now, if he would have followed up with this guy, he would have had to make rolls, but this Beastman, while maybe some go-for-its, could have at least uh, tagged him. Bold move to blitz with that guy, because you just made it easier for Mazrak to blitz you. Yes, but he's hoping to put him down, I think. Yep. He does get two shots at him, so that's... Yep. There we go. Yeah, he can't... Or no, he can blitz him with uh, one go-for-it from here. Uh, all he has to do is put that guy down for an easy uh, go for it a two die blitz. Yeah, he's almost certainly going to do that. Uh, well, interesting putting him here because if he didn't get this guy out of the way like if something, well I guess there's no nothing that would have messed it up that wouldn't have uh, turned over, so no big deal. Mm -hmm. And he's down. All right. And a stun. That stun's huge for uh, for Maserat. Oh, why? I guess he's trying yeah, to... Oh, he... does he have player in position? He does hey, not. To, technically, I mean, he's got two turns. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, either of these is technically able to get there. So, um, and even this Chaos Warrior doesn't have the movement, but he can be an intermediate receiver for these. Mm -hmm. uh, although, now he doesn't move anyone to position. So. He does not. So although, look, he had extra rerolls, so I mean... So yeah. Got it, but still, like if your point was to hit everybody... Well, he now, because he didn't move anybody, he can no longer get a touchdown. Yeah. I say, like if the, if the whole point was to just hit people anyway, I guess at that point, why not just mark the ball? I don't understand why he threw that two-die uphill. There was no risk of a touchdown coming at you, and... I guess maybe he was just doing anything he could to dislodge the ball? I think yeah, I would, I think so I would he just... Could try to grab it? I think uh, I would just call this a drive a loss, a 0-0 into halftime. <laughs> yeah. Mazark screws up the last pass for that bonus SPP. Yeah. <clears throat> Alright. I do feel like we're seeing some early dividends from Mazarek's decision to take, uh, was it fans early, right? Yes, yeah. Uh, I, I think it's it's coming up. I don't know if it's coming up more useful than another Chaos Warrior would have been. Um, but, yep, there goes the extra reroll. But he's not really needing rerolls, though, so. Yeah. Like, I always find the cheerleaders, the, uh, the assistant coaches, the fan factor, um, nice, 
but it adds team value for something that you really have no control over. Mm-hmm. Rut row. And then, right as I say, he's not using rerolls. He needs it immediately. Yeah, screw you. He heard you and decided to prove yep. you wrong. Interesting that he's not following up the Chaos Warriors. Maybe because uh, he's wanting to keep this cage with Chaos Warriors in the front. But That was my thought. Well... Well, the you first weren't... one, I didn't know why he didn't engage. The second two, my guess, is because he wants to make sure his cage is not engaged when he starts to drive. Yeah, but you, you could easily just step those two Chaos Warriors up and use these two Beastmen that are making a weird cage and put them in the front. Yeah. G gain, that, uh, gain that yard instead you're... I mean, I know it's one space, but... Um, and did he use his Blitz? He did not. Interesting. Uh, yeah, I think I would have gone for one of the linemen... Uh, just to, you know, get a squishy guy out. The catcher's... He, I mean, I don't think his block beastman used used a block. I don't uh, think he threw any block dice. I don't believe so. But maybe he's got a plan. Yeah. And maybe he did, because I, I have a hard time remembering, like, which guys get put down and... So yeah, the patented uh, take up all the assist on one side and then one die block the ball carrier. Um, it's a it's a lot of rolls for something that could possibly work, especially with low skilled uh, a player that you're going against like this. Yeah. Uh, yeah. The the Kizzle of Circus is really hard to cage against, but it's okay because he brought all kinds of punchies. All right. Now let's see how. Mazarak handles being surrounded on all angles. He should do fine. He's he's breaking this apart pretty pretty concisely. Um, it looks like he's. I don't know where he's going to put his cage, but we'll. I, I imagine we'll soon see. Yeah. That's interesting. I think I would have hit with that south one just to get a second shot at a catcher. Um, but then again, I'm a little bit. I think I'm a little bit more bloodthirsty than a lot of coaches. Um, yeah, uh, I was thinking the same thing, and the other thing is here, like, now he's adjacent to a, a blitzer. Yeah, and with and with uh, my strategy, the likelihood would have been that the uh, that catcher would have been right here, so that mm -hmm. wouldn't have been very useful. But I'm I'm bloodthirsty enough to think that I can remove that catcher. Although with your team right now, it's all pushes and hugs. So yeah. All right, he's so getting right in there. There goes all those assists. <laughs> so uh, if he can get this lineman cleared up, that's a that's a one die right there, easy. Oh no, he's gonna do it from the blitzer right there. He just needs uh, he just needs a leap right here. Uh, he doesn't because number three is taking. Oh, care of that's that. right. Three is also touching him. Sorry. Yeah. Um. Yeah. He there goes the. He's moving everybody, but he's gonna get that one die. Now, and jump up, so he's going to blitz. I always forget that the Kizla blitzers have jump up. Even when I'm playing them, I forget. <laughs> Hup. Interesting. Is that the catcher? Is that why he did that? Nope. Interesting that he went with that leap and not... Because uh, I know that he... marks the ball or lands yeah, on the ball? Yeah, maybe not land on it, that's pretty scary, but it leaps over and uh, just marks it. Mm -hmm. I don't know what that leap would have accomplished over there. Maybe he was m leaping to move to mark this guy, so that once he marked the ball, everybody was marked. Or maybe he just wanted a, a more proper safety, like one that he didn't have to worry about. Mm, that leap position didn't make a lot of sense for that then, because it was like behind a line already. Yeah. Hmm. We'll see though. So yeah, oh, it's still free and clear. Yep, uh, that's probably not gonna last that way. Um, my predict, my prediction would be this guy blitzing off him, and yep, that's yeah, and then he's just gonna grab the ball. Yep. I don't think that's what I would have done, but that that was a very logical decision. I, I don't have any problems with it. Yeah. I guess. Leaves him a little exposed on that right side, so... Uh, and now Master Moose can actually get a legitimate two die. Yeah. He has many opportunities at this game. Um, I, th I think I would have pushed this the lineman here and just aggressed him onto the sideline. 
Um, but I probably would have given up a touchdown, so. I almost certainly would have by now. Yeah. Probably um, too. I just knew that ball carrier wasn't going to stand to the way everything was, so I just don't know if if that was worth it, basically giving up the chance to get a player advantage. Yeah. Uh, that is probably the best case scenario for Mazrak right now, having that guy catch the ball. Yes. Because he can't move anywhere. There's nothing he can do now. Yeah. All right. And then those one die. He didn't really lose anything from that one die because that catcher's already uh, there tagging him. So that wasn't a bad uh, wasn't. A, I don't know what he... Die. Was it? Yeah, he rolled skulls. Oh, wow. Um, yeah. That's unfortunate. All right. Probably getting a blitz from here after the free moves. I will say, while early on it did feel like Ma Master Moose was rolling a lot of low, uh, having a lot of low rolls, so uh, it does feel like it's actually kind of balancing out, and then it's just the timing of his roll. Yeah. It's interesting that he did the diagonal push again. Um, I know it probably wouldn't have made a much, much statistical difference, but I think I would have pushed to here uh, in hopes that it would bounce to one of, you know, next to one of my players. Pushing him up here, there's a very low chance of it going next to one of my players. Right. Uh, maybe the strategy could have been, though, just to keep the ball as far Back away as, from the end zone yeah, yeah, as possible. That's And that's, yeah, that's fine. But I also like to aggress directly towards the sideline at all times as well. Mm -hmm. Makes the likelihood of that, uh, that crowd surf a little little higher. Yes. Alright, so... Masterwork is in force here, but Master Moose has all the presence on the ball. Mm -hmm. Yeah, failed dodge, that was rough. And but again, Master Moose already out of all of his rerolls four mm -hmm. turns in. Well, and this... Uh, it's one thing that has to be said for the Beefcake Brigade and uh, Masterwork's coaching is he is forcing Master Moose to roll for everything. Uh, Master Moose does not get anything for free this game, and I think that's what's killing him, is because his rolls, uh, we'll see the actual statistics of his rolls, but it, when you make people roll, that, you know, that, those ones and twos are going to come up more often. Yeah, and at that point, especially in, in this matchup where he's got a player disadvantage and he's playing with a little bit of desperation, mm -hmm. all of those rolls feel like, this is the roll I need. Because mm -hmm. uh, they are. So because yeah. because he needs six rolls for the plan to work. Yeah, Whereas and Mass it Rack does make that. those feel way worse. Yeah, and Masrak, uh, kind of playing to his strength, having this mosh pit going on, none of the rolls for him are important. And mm -hmm. he's throwing a lot of block dice, which really have a much better chance of not ending the turn. Right. So, if, yeah, if anyone knows how to play against Master Moose, it's Masrak, who has done it more times than anyone, thanks to playoffs and championships. Um, and you're definitely seeing that experience right here, where this might be the worst-case scenario game for Master Moose that he has this whole season. There we go. And see, it's one of those things that, like, if... If Masrak wasn't making him do so many rolls, this would have been an, an easy pass, and the, the whole you know drive would have been turned on its head. But each of those rolls starts piling up, and eventually that one and two is going to come up. So Masrak is doing an excellent job um, without overextending himself. Yeah, and now he gets to move the ball the other way, and now it's Master Moose who has to has to just start doing whatever he can to get down there. <sighs> Again, these angled pushes. Uh, yeah, that would have been. That would have been real tough for him. Maybe he's worried about the, the leap to here, but this player's already there. Yeah. For the purposes and of the And don't come with jump up, so... Yeah. Um, yeah, I would have definitely aggressed him onto the, the sideline. Now, leap does not affect your movement allowance, correct? Ne so... No, it just takes two from your movement allowance. I probably would have kept this player right here. Yeah, that's what I was thinking too. Like, he force him to make the, that leap and then that dodge. That is two rolls to take a shot at your, yeah. your guy. There we go. Okay, so he does he does fill it in. He's got lots of bodies there, so he, he did have that planned. Uh, do you use splits? Do you miss his blitz? 
I don't recall it, uh, but I don't think there was a use for it. I think just about everybody was engaged. Well, maybe well, that not was that one. Yeah, yeah, that one right there. That was a perfect time for a blitz. Yeah. So here goes this blitz, and here comes the leap for one die. Oh, again. And you know, you know, that's a that's a two. That's not that's not just a one. You know, making these, he's forcing him to make these rolls just to get anything done. Yeah. That is a late touchdown, so that is great for Mazrak. Yep. C three P, bro. All right, so we're looking at the Kizlov Circus with two turns remaining, and the Beefcake Brigade will have one final turn to get some punches. Let's see if uh, Bowden and Brody's Circus can actually do something. They're at a massive player disadvantage, mostly due to their own uh, leap KOs and injuries. Yeah, I think he had, what, two leap KOs that last drive? Mm-hmm. Uh, that's, uh, that's a damn good kick. Yep. So with that kick, ooh. That kick is more impressive because that dude doesn't have feet. Yes. He does that with hooves. Yes. All right. So, uh, oh, wow. Uh, Masrak auto ended. Yeah. He, he just let him go. I don't, I, I, I mean. It's a very sportsman thing to do. Would not have done it. I would, not for a second. Shots. I would, yeah, I would have uh, at least gotten two blocks. Um, yep. If this was an exhibition, I would have considered it. I'm not doing that with a uh, potential growing yeah. team. Yeah. Okay. Well, again, failing that pickup. So uh, let's look at. I'm I'm interested to see how these dice fell. Um, let's go look at Bowden and Brody's circus first. Uh, so we see uh, the rolls actually skew high. Just a bit. Just a bit skew high. Those those ones are pretty uh, pronounced. But you also have to consider. That almost 50 rolls for armor. Yeah. So we don't know where those where those fell. Uh, with only 10 failures and an arm, generally armor 8 team, uh, mm -hmm. to me that that smells of like either even or a little low on the armor side that the rolls were. Um, however, those injury rolls were fairly high because uh, it looks like a majority were um, 10 or higher. Yeah. Or not a yeah, a majority were oh no, I guess in, in this regard uh, success means not injury. I don't that that's kind of hard to figure out. Um uh let's see. He had the death. He had what two legitimate injuries or three legitimate injuries I thought off the top of my head. Yeah. But uh I don't think there's enough there to uh, to just call like it was awful, but for these rolls in particular, uh it it's pretty even. I I just think that when you're rolling 3 plus die rolls that all require a three plus on your turn uh mm -hmm. i mean by statistics one of those is going to fail which is going to end your turn yeah uh as well as leap is he used leap 13 times leap is either going to be a you know a three plus or a four plus depending on what he's using it looked like he was willing to use that blitzer a little bit more this week than he did last week well he does have very long legs so uh oh, yeah. that means he's gonna get three plus or two plus uh, oh yeah, so the the failure rate on that then is is a little high. Yes, I think in the leap in particular, that's that's a little high. Let's look at his dodges. Uh, failure rate on the dodges is probably a little high too, um, mm -hmm. and I think maybe that's where the the skew is pretty bad. Uh, is just specifically for leap and dodge. It's just that his his twos, I think, rained on those because I didn't see a lot of ones, but I did see a lot of twos. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and obviously, twos were his lowest roll result, so I think he only got twos when it came to uh, yeah. leaps, uh, armor armor rolls, and dodges, which, good for the armor rolls. Yeah, that's, that's great for there. All right, let's see what his block dice look like. Um, pretty consistent uh, attacker down, like yeah, oddly, that's... oddly attacker down. So I, I will concede that uh, Nuffle came in with some attacker downs for poor old Master Moose. Yeah, he definitely rolled a little high there, a little low on his, uh, what's it called, on his defender stumbles. I think uh, everything else, considering the number of block, like if you were just to like cut this down maybe by half and then distribute it back through, it was, it was fine. Yeah, 
And it's also considering he threw quite a few one dies and mm -hmm. quite a few, uh, well, not a, quite a few, but a couple of two die uphills, uh, which exacerbate the attacker downs. Yeah, it looks like he only did four one dies. Really? Oh, man, it felt like more. Well, in that yeah, case, points to you, good. man. Well, it uh, it rolls really fast, and that's what happens to me, is that I see the result, but it was because it rolled two dice and then only shows the result that was selected completely, like, almost instantaneous. One, go back. Two, three, four. So really, honestly, even with him skewing high on skulls, he only had, realistically, four bad results, and that's counting the reroll. Yeah, he uh, he only applied one attacker down the entire the entire game, but he applied two uh, both downs the entire game. So it, it largely did not affect him. It did skew high, but well, I it had was, a pretty minimal effect. Yeah, and the only re the only time he rerolled blocking dice was one time, so that didn't eat up uh, his rerolls. Um, and the skull that he got was a two die uphill. So yeah. And then, yeah. All right, so let's look at uh, mass racks rolls. Uh, wow. Um, yeah, uh, the twos are a, an obvious high number, but again, he's got relatively low roll numbers, so uh, that that skew of twos not uh, mm -hmm. is is not odd. But uh, I think it's the those mostly came from the the armor and maybe injury rolls those twos, yeah. because uh, he just, you know, Mass Rack just wasn't throwing a lot of uh, D6s. Yeah, that's that's true, and look, everything looks, con considering how few dice he threw, most of those percentages look about right. Um, maybe he could have pa or succeeded on one of those passes or catches. Like Between all of those, mm -hmm. he probably should have gotten one of them, Yeah, but really not that big of a deal. Let's look at the block dice breakdown. Uh, numbers look like where they should be. Attacker down is a little on the high side comparatively, um, especially if you consider both down is a little high. But his stumbles are real high too. So um, yeah. uh, the way I look at this, honestly, yeah, his he may be a little high on attacker down or a little bit low on his uh, defender defender down. But, but those stumbles make the difference. Yeah, he's he's dead even on positive results versus negative results here. Yeah, and it looks like he never applied. He applied a both down there. Uh, um, although that may be... That may be a block. That may be the one with block. Yeah, and then here was a, a double both down that he re-rolled. Uh, here's a double attacker down that he re-rolled, double attacker down that he re-rolled. Uh, but he's also throwing a lot more block dice, so those double attacker downs, those are those are going to happen. So you, yeah. you gotta, that's what your rerolls are for. Um, yeah, and he had four of them for both halves, so... Yep. So the SPP gains pretty even. Uh, Beefcake Brigade got more just because of injuries. Um, and then otherwise, Occupation looked pretty similar because the ball basically just chilled on the ground for every drive. Uh, but Yeah. yeah. Stats look pretty even. Yeah, um, I, I just I think... I would be surprised if Bowden and Brody Circus don't have a level up after this game. Yeah. Because they just had so much SPP last week. Yeah. Um, for the Beefcake Brigade, I think maybe... Um, and I don't know what your plan is, so take this with a grain of salt, but uh, your pushes, uh, maybe some more cardinal direction pushes rather than uh, diagonals, getting those toward the lines. Um, and then just just make sure that you're moving people with a plan. Uh, take take two seconds. Be like, okay, where where are his players? There was a there was a couple times that we noted uh, that you just let uh, some of the kids live just hang out, and that made drives a little harder. Yeah, for me, it's just make sure that you are placing your players in the in the best position to succeed. Having that chaos where you just hang out for a couple of, of turns. Um, not using your blitzes on at, at, on all of your turns, especially with a team with horns. Super weird you wouldn't be using those blitzes every chance you got. Yeah. Uh, uh, f for Bowden and Brody Circus, honestly, man, uh, I just wouldn't have played as aggressive as you did. You, you, were, you were very much engaged. Uh, I think with the way that they were throwing hits on you, uh, staying one space away, and then just 
basically pulling him 0-0 and then doing what you could to score a touchdown, conserve those re-rolls. You just played super physically aggressive. For me, uh, and I'm going to say this knowing that you're going to blow me out 5 to nothing when we play, <laughs> uh, the first thing you do on offense, it seems like right now, or at least this season, is go after the ball. And in this case, for this particular game at least, with Masrak being offset with his defense, you had the opportunity to get some receivers downfield untouched, like no dodges, no leaps. You could have done it. Um, they wouldn't necessarily have gotten as far because they have to circumvent a little bit, but that's still a lot of movement for a team that most of the time you're going to be expecting to do passes. Uh, it just, like, to me, it seemed like on occasion... And this could just be coaching style, but it felt like you weren't using all of your free moves optimally before doing that super aggressive move. Uh, I had pointed out earlier not picking up that player because you wanted to pick up the ball there, but just picking up that player to mark the ball makes things less convenient for for the chaos team in general. So yeah, there was a, there was a lot of instances where I saw you had five or six players directly toe to toe with four or five of his players and to me with the team that you're playing that means somebody is doing something very right or the other coach is doing something very wrong and I, and I think in this instance you just got r super aggressive yeah all right well you know uh, I'm I'm sure there will be a game that comes up uh, that you guys can tell us that we don't know what we're talking about so uh, feel, yeah. feel free to probably do probably so. soon yeah uh, but other than that, thank you for watching, and hope to see you next time on Cablevision HD. A yeah, great game. Have a good one.